not exactly a shocking story here, but a U.S. Army Special Forces man uh, defeats a woman inside the cage in an MMA bout. Uh, what is shocking, though, is here is the victory picture. See a problem here? Yep. Mm-hmm. This is a Fallon Fox 2.0. Except for the Fallon Fox individual in this case, it's this is somebody who is a highly trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and uh, spent their life as um, a rather large man. A rather large man. But hey, began their transition in 2010. So, uh, I guess n now we know why women take so long to do things because their hormones are very, very slow acting. But yeah, let's, uh, as you can see by the headline here, it's not progress. Social media erupts and outrage and, and so does regular people. If you've ever seen a cage fight and if you've ever seen women's MMA and there are some incredibly skilled women who are very high end at what they do, but there is a significant difference. It's like watching tennis as well. Uh, there's a big difference between the men's competition and the women's competition and it needs to stay that way because you start crossing the streams like this you end up with a bitch getting choked out so this isn't just a the social media cause du jour a victory by a transgender mma fighter who once served in the u.s army special forces like this is a top percentile individual okay over a french woman prompted an immediate backlash on social media from many who say it is unfair of the trans woman to compete against a fifth gendered athlete in sports yeah just create an entire freak show category i'm down a biological man getting into the cage and kicking a woman around is not progress no it is just a fucking transphobe what an evil person this guy benedict spence oh my god just such hatred i can't i can hardly stomach it and neither could his opponent uh alana mclaughlin 38 won her first professional fight at the combate global prelims friday by forcing celine provost into submission by just walking into the cage and be like i got to fight that the fucking huge guy what the fuck <laughs> with the chokehold in the second round wow not very skilled, eh? Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> Looks terrifying. Adrian Hilton, a university, a university lecturer, tweeted sarcastically that while the opportunity is endless for women's sports, it doesn't apply in this case. Yeah, it is, if you want to be just another victim. When a former U.S. Army Special Forces soldier becomes a trans woman MMA fighters and chokes a female competitor into submission, I'm not sure the opportunity for women in sports is any longer endless. Yeah, that glass ceiling became a little bit more concrete, if you ask me. But hey, no, this, this is progress, right? We need more freak show events like this to really just prove those fucking whack jobs uh, completely wrong with their view of the future. This is completely and utterly unsustainable because, oh, it looks good on paper. We get to make history by having the first trans athlete out there. There's a marked difference between the two right there, okay? I don't have to point out which one. I think the t-shirt makes it fairly fucking obvious, but you can even just tell from the hips and the shoulders... The, in the fucking dome on this dude there's a considerable difference between woman and the lady that she smashed this shouldn't happen this shouldn't happen again but it will it will because there's ideologues just trying to pop a fucking rating out there so can't wait for brock lesnar's uh, current run in the fed to wrap up so they can just come back and he can take back the women's heavyweight championship that'll be fucking terrific Anyways, uh, yeah, we talked about this, and uh, God, that was a few days ago when it was announced. Um, uh, Trump doing play-by-play, -play, he seemed to just have a total fucking pisser. And uh, like it says here in the headline, uh, that you can kind of read, but it's not terribly important. Donald Trump, mostly, stuck to sports during thriller boxing commentary stint. It was a fucking weird event that they put on. Okay, because Holyfield got blasted, not. But before the two-minute mark in the first round by Vitor Belfort, who is like 10 years his junior. And yeah, that was probably going to be TRT Belfort out there because this is just an exhibition after all. So you know, the people saying that, oh, this is the end of boxing as we know it. Yeah, that's like complaining if kids are fucking wrestling on the back trampoline lamenting the death of cage fighting like, like come on now it's a spectacle 
It's another opportunity to see a couple of legends compete. It's just another paycheck for these people. And Anderson Silva also fucking blasted Tito Ortiz into oblivion, which is such a lopsided bout, especially when they're only going to specifically do striking. You have Anderson Silva, one of the best strikers, not just in the heavyweight division, or I'm sorry, the middleweight division, but in all of fucking mixed martial arts. And then you have Tito Ortiz, who is an accomplished, I think he was Juco champion at some point, but he's a, he's a wrestler. Okay. See, that's what would happen if you put a legitimate striker against one of the Paul brothers and Vitor Belfort called out whoever the, I don't know, the one who thinks that he's a legitimate boxer. That would totally kill this promotion and stop the money train rolling in if Vitor was going to smash one of those kids because he's ruthless. Uh, those hands, man, they haven't really slowed down all that much. Former President Donald Trump began his uh, debut as a boxing commentator. He's been a fan of fights for as long, longer than I've even been alive, so... The fact that this is the first time that he's ever called the fight, it, it, it's weird. It's, it's very weird. I only heard a couple of things, but not like there was a total pisser. Trump agreed to provide commentary during a four-fight card featuring Evander Holyfield, the former heavyweight champion who was making his return to boxing, and he did for a couple of minutes. At the outset of the pay-per-view live stream, the lead commentator noted that it was the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and deferred to the former president. That's pretty based. Calling the anniversary of 9-11 one of the most important days, Trump added, we had a very bad week because some very bad decisions were made, and we have never allowed oh and we would have never allowed what happened to have happened in afghanistan with 13 great warriors and many injured and many people killed in these final few days it was just a shame nothing wrong with that later while waiting for the results of three boxes <laughs> three judges I, I i'm just reading ahead a little bit three judges after the first fight trump noted that he has seen a lot of bad boxing decisions over the years just in regards to bad boxing decisions okay it's you know what? It, it, it's like elections. Yes, it could be rigged. It really could be now, couldn't it? What could he possibly be referencing? However, on the night of when Holyfield got stopped at the end of the first round, the Seminole Hard Rock uh, Hotel and Casino in Florida, perhaps the most surprising of all of this, Trump mostly stuck to boxing. Yes, and he also got a standing ovation and people were yelling and screaming, yes, we want Trump, we want Trump, we love Trump, we love Trump. The dude is having a wonderful time waiting, waiting to announce his candidacy for 2024. And if the GOP knows what's good for him, they'll just get out of the way. I'm going to be doing some research in the next couple of days, and perhaps if there's anything to it, I'll share it with you guys. But the only reason he hasn't announced, at least this is his own self-profession here, is that uh, there's campaign finance laws. And I want to take a look at that. So maybe he's just, you know, kind of telling everybody, it's like, we got to wait, but you're going to be happy. And I can't say anything yet because my campaign finance laws. So if there's anything to it, I'll share it with you guys when appropriate. But this is all about Trump having a total pisser of a weekend because we talked about on Saturday as well when instead of, I don't know, just shuffling from fucking useless morning ceremony when you're not getting booed everywhere you go to not speak at another fucking location, Trump was down there with like the actual heroes, the first responders, taking questions, talking with them, and being around those people and being cheered everywhere he went and drawing huge crowds. But Joe Biden's a far more, polit er, far more popular politician, right? Yeah, nothing funny there. Having hosted memorable fights at his casino, yes, the Trump Plaza, and WrestleManias 4 and 5, can't forget that, that's important, Trump exhibited a, an enthusiasm for the sport, a decent knowledge of boxing and stamina, that's all, I gotta find a way to find the old telecast for this, because this just sounds fun. Uh, which is to say he continued to mix it up with his son Donald Trump Jr. and guest commentators during the pay-per-view that stretched almost three and a half hours long. Wow, that's almost as long as one of his rallies. Uh, what he seemed to enjoy the most was the adoring crowd. No shit, which broke into a which broke into chants of "We want Trump, we want Trump." He rose to his feet with a broad smile and shook his fist. I don't know what's with the little fucking movement that he does. It's awfully boomerish, but again, he's the orange man that we might not want, but he's the one that we deserve. But hey, it wasn't even just at the a little boxing event where he was getting cheered well his opposition was um getting absolutely bitched out and he wasn't even there to appreciate it but i'm sure he heard it fuck joe biden chants break out at college football games 
You're telling me Joe Biden, a Democrat, isn't popular with the youth today? I find this so fucking hard to believe. I know. Keep politics out of sports? Oh, that fucking... Those horses are so far out of the barn at this point. They're in another state. For a second straight re week, sorry, fuck Joe Biden. A chance broke out at college games across the country. Multiple instances were recorded and shared across social media throughout the weekend. Slate of games... Old Rowe shared a clip of Auburn University students. Oh, there, that's just in stupid Alabama. They probably believe in horse dewormer. Whatever. Performing the chant during the 62 to nothing beatdown of Alabama State. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man, that's great. The student section at Alabama, Auburn's in-state rival, also performed the chant Saturday, according to The Athletic. That probably put a tear to old Black Lives Matter marches Nick Saban's eye. Yeah, that sucks. Likewise, the chant happened at Mississippi State during their win over NC State. Oh, okay, so only winners cheer f fuck Joe Biden. Good thing to know. Just keep that one in your guys' back pocket. But I don't know, guys. Every time I hear this type of stuff happening, I never hear any... Yay, Joe Biden, okay, because he showed up, his his likeness, or his pre-recorded message for the Super Bowl came up on the screen, and he was vehemently booed then, okay, whenever the guy shows up, he just draws the boo birds, and I, I, I don't get it, he's so fucking popular, right? Oh, it's gonna be a fun next few months in the lead up to the announcement that Trump is going to be running in 2024, the media man, um, they're gonna be going into overdrive, and especially especially to start slandering their own base. Do you think they're going to go so far as to start calling out university students? Because I think that that is probably something they don't want to look too deeply into because it could just be an entire world of indoctrination that they don't want to be lifting the manhole cover on. So they'll just probably go on and continue to not address it at all. But hey, we hear you. We see you. And let's keep it going. I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.